I'm here today to share with you an extraordinary journey, extraordinary rewarding journey, actually, which brought me into training rats to save human lives by detecting landmines and tuberculosis. As a child, I had two passions. One was a passion for rodents. I had all kinds of rats, mice, hamsters, gerbils, squirrels, you name it, I bred it and I sold them to pet shops. <laughs> I also had a passion for Africa. Growing up in a multicultural environment, we had African students in the house and I learned about their stories. So different background, dependency on imported know-how, goods, services, exuberant cultural diversity. Africa was truly fascinating for me. I became an industrial engineer, engineering product development, and I focused on appropriate detection technologies. Actually, first, appropriate technologies for developing countries. I started working in the industry, but I wasn't really happy to contribute to a material consumer society in a linear extracting and manufacturing mode. I quit my job to focus on a real-world problem, landmines. We're talking 95 now. Princess Diana is announcing on TV that landmines form a structural barrier to any development, which is really true. As long as these devices are there or there is suspicion of landmines, you can't really enter into the land. Actually, there was an appeal worldwide for new detectors, sustainable in the environment where they needed to produce, which is mainly in the developing world. We chose rats. Why would you choose rats? Because aren't they vernim? Well, actually, rats are, in contrary to what most people think about them, rats are highly sociable creatures, and actually, our product, what you see here, there's a target somewhere here. Uh, you see an operator, a trained African, with his rat in front, who actually is left and right. There the animal finds a mine, it scratches on the soil, and the animal comes back for a food reward. Very, very simple, very sustainable in this environment. Here the animal gets its food reward, and that's how it works. Very, very simple. Now, why would you use rats? Rats have been used since the 50s last century in all kinds of experiments. Rats have more genetic material allocated to olfaction than any other mammal species. They're extremely sensitive to smell. Moreover, they have the mechanisms to map all these smells and to communicate about it. Now, how do we communicate with rats? Well, uh, we, we don't talk rats, but we have a clicker, a uh, standard method for animal training, uh, which you see there. A clicker which makes a particular sound with which we can reinforce particular behaviors. First of all, we associate the click sound with the food reward, which is mashed banana and peanuts together in a syringe. Once the animal knows click, food, click, food, click, food, so click is food, we bring it in a cage with a hole, and actually the animal learns to stick the nose in the hole under which a target scent is placed, and to do that for five seconds. Five seconds, which is long for a rat. Once the animal knows this, we make the task a bit more difficult. It learns now to find the target smell in a cage with several holes, up to ten holes. Then the animal learns to walk on a leash in the open and find targets. In the next step, animals learn to find real mines in real minefields. They are tested and accredited, uh, according to international mine action standards, just like dogs have to pass a test. This consists of 400 square meters. There's a number of mines, a number of mines uh, placed blindly, and a team of trainer and their rat have to find back all the, uh, all the targets. If the animal does that, it gets a license as an accredited animal to be operational in the field. Just like dogs, by the way. Maybe one slight difference. We can train rats at a fifth of the price of a trained demining dog. This is our team in Mozambique. One Tanzanian trainer who transfers the skills to these three Mozambican fellows. And you should see the pride in the eyes of these people. They have a skill which makes them much less dependent on uh, foreign aid. Moreover, this small team 
together with, of course, you need the heavy vehicles and the manual deminers to follow up. But with this small investment in a rat capacity, we have demonstrated in Mozambique that we can reduce the cost price per square meter up to 60% of what is currently normal. $2 per square meter, we do it at 1.18, and we can still bring that price down. Question of scale, if we can bring in more rats, we can actually make the output even bigger. We have a demonstration site in Mozambique. 11 African governments have seen that they can become less dependent by using this technology. They have signed a pact for peace and treaty in the Great Lakes region, and um, they endorse hero rats uh, to clear their common borders of landmines. But let me bring you to a very different problem, and there's about 6,000 people last year that walked on a landmine. But worldwide, last year almost 1.9 million died from tuberculosis as a first cause of infection. Especially in Africa, where TB and HIV are strongly linked, there is a huge uh, coming problem. Microscopy, the standard WHO procedure, reaches some 40 to 60 percent reliability. Uh, in Tanzania, the numbers don't lie, 45 percent of people get di TB patients get diagnosed with TB before they die. That means that if you have TB, you have more chance that you won't be detected but will just die from TB secondary infections and so on. And, um, if, however, you're detected very early, diagnosed early, treatment can start, and even in HIV positives, it makes sense, you can actually cure TB even in HIV positives. So, in our common language, Dutch, the name for TB is tering, which etymologically refers to the smell of tar. Already the old Chinese and the Greek Hippocrates have actually published, documented, that TB can be diagnosed based on the volatiles exuding from uh, patients. So what we did is we collected some samples, just as a way of testing, from hospitals, uh, trained rats on them, uh, and, well, see, see if this works, and wonder, well, we can reach 89% sensitivity, 86% specificity using uh, multiple rats in a row. This is how it works. And really, this is a generic technology. We're talking now explosive, tuberculosis, but can you imagine you can actually put anything under there? So, how does it work? You have a cassette with 10 samples. We put these 10 samples at once in the cage. An animal only needs two hundredths of a second to discriminate the scent, so it goes extremely fast. Here it's already at the third sample. This is a positive sample. Uh, gets a click sound and comes for the food reward. And by doing so, very fast, we can have like a second line opinion uh, where to see which patients are positive, which are negative. Just as an indication, whereas a microscopist can process 40 samples in a day, a rat can process the same amount of samples in seven minutes only. A cage like this... <laughs> a cage like this, provided that you have rats, and we have now currently 25 uh, tuberculosis rats, uh, a cage like this, operating throughout the day, can process 1,680 samples. Can you imagine the potential offspring applications? environmental detection of pollutants in soils, uh, the customs applications, detection of illicit goods in containers, and so on. But let's stick first to tuberculosis. I, I just want to briefly highlight the blue rods are the scores of microscopy only in uh, the five clinics in Dar es Salaam on a population of 500,000 people where 15,000 reported to get a test done. Microscopy found 1,800 patients and by just presenting those samples once more to the rats and looping those results back, we were able to increase case detection rates by over 30%. Throughout last year, we've been 
depending on which intervals you take, we've been consistently increasing case detection rates in five hospitals in Dar es Salaam between 30 and 40 percent. So this is really considerable. Knowing that a missed patient by microscopy infects up to 15 people, healthy people per year, uh, you can be sure that uh, we have saved lots of lives. At least our hero rats have saved lots of lives. The way forward for us is now to standardize this technology. And there are simple things, like for instance, we have a small laser in the sniffer hole where the animal has to stick for five seconds, so to standardize this, also to standardize the pellets, the food rewards, and to semi-automate this in order to replicate this on a much larger scale and affect lives of many more people. To conclude, there are also other applications at the horizon. Here is the first prototype of uh, our camera rat, which is a, a rat with a rat backpack with a camera that can go under rubble to detect for victims after earthquake and so on. This is in a prototype stage. We don't have a working system here yet. <laughs> to conclude, I would actually like to say, you may think this is about rats, this project, but in the end it is about people. It is about empowering vulnerable communities to tackle difficult, expensive and dangerous humanitarian detection tasks, and doing that with a local resource plenty available. So something completely different is to keep on challenging your perception about the resources surrounding you, whether they are environmental, technological, animal, or human. And to respectfully harmonize with them in order to foster a sustainable world. Thank you very much.